Hello, this is Dr. Ford Brewer with Heart Attack, Stroke, Cancer, Disability Prevention. Um, <clears throat> as we've mentioned many times, weight management is a major part of, uh, of prevention of heart attack, strokes, the, and cancer, the top three causes of death um, in this country. <clears throat> and it's a major challenge for many people. I'm currently doing a series of books on... Um, diet management. Uh, recently did one on uh, Good Calories, Bad Calories by Gary Taubes. Um, this one is on the insulin theory of weight management. Um, what is the insulin theory? Again, <clears throat> as I mentioned Gary Taubes, he's written at this point I think three books. Um, all uh, focused on this theory. And I think there's a lot to the theory. Uh, the theory is this, that um, the, the public health statements that you've heard out there, that fats in the diet are the cause of heart attack and stroke, are probably not true. And I would agree with that. I think that they're a relatively minor cause, fats in the diet, relatively minor cause of heart attack and stroke. I think you can see that as a, a physician specializing in this area and watching um, inflammation in people's artery walls. <clears throat> the insulin theory goes like this though, that uh, carbs in the diet do cause a problem. Uh, that would be sugars, especially fructose, but also uh, uh, flours, especially refined flours. But many of us don't know that for example, both nuts and especially legumes, beans, have a lot of carbohydrates as well. Now, why are carbohydrates an issue? Well, they increase the blood glucose. How do we know that? Well, tons and tons of experience. Uh, diabetics know and are very clear that carbohydrates in a meal will cause an increase in blood glucose. Um, a couple of the big authors in this area are uh, Richard Bernstein with The Diabetic Solution and several other um, books in this area. He's a, a superman in, in his mid-80s. By that I mean at uh, 12 years old he was diagnosed with uh, type 1 or brittle diabetes and here he is uh, in his mid-80s with an HDL over 100 incredible values that like I've never seen on, on any human. So great values and he's done that by managing his blood glucose, keeping it in the 80s. Uh, Jenny Rule is another author in this area. Um, her experience is not just her own but the experience of diabetics reporting into her award-winning um, uh, website called uh, Blood Sugar 101. Now let's get back to the issue. So let's say, okay, we accept common knowledge that fats don't raise blood sugar, proteins don't raise blood sugar, but carbohydrates do, whether they're simple or complex carbohydrates. The simpler, the quicker they raise it. So what's wrong with uh, high blood sugar? Well, that becomes the issue. Um, <clears throat> it seems to be pretty clear that uh, Glucose over 100 is not good. Clearly, there's a significant amount of evidence uh, that indicates that 140 you start getting uh, tissue destruction. The routine t tissue destruction that you see with diabetics, uh, eye problems, foot problems, problems with the nerves. Um, and how does this happen? I don't think we know completely what's going on. I do think there's a very simple um, explanation may or may not be right but again it's very simple and very obvious it's called glycosylation I remember hearing a professor once talking about diabetes and he was talking about he pulled a small piece of plastic out of his pocket and he said this is what happens to diabetic tissue it gets rubberized he was talking about glycosylation what is glycosylation I've used the term a couple of times uh, it's a scientific term, but again, like most scientific terms, go in and break down the root words. Gly glyco uh, glycos or glucose 
elation. So you're attaching a glucose to a protein. Now, <clears throat> that may sound unusual and, you know, not really in my sphere. Bottom line is there was a very simple example that most of us have heard about. If you've heard of hemoglobin A1C, you've heard of glycosylation here in this setting. Hemoglobin A1C is nothing but glycosylated hemoglobin. And that is actually why it works so well. It gives us a great average of the level of glucose in the blood over a month's period. The longer time you spend at 140, the more glycosylation you get. The longer time you spend at levels of 80, the less glycosylation you get of the hemoglobin molecule. So again, glycosylation is a, um, is a known entity. Whether or not it causes all the damage associated with diabetes and, and arteries, I, I don't know. I think there's a, a lot more going on. I can tell you, again, as a doc who looks at heart attack and stroke prevention, it clearly um, increased glucose values clearly cause inflammation. Uh, inflammation, as we've mentioned many times in other um, videos, is the real cause, uh, the immediate cause and long-term cause of heart attack and stroke. It uh, causes deposition of plaque in the artery wall, and it destabilizes that plaque. So let's get back to uh, uh, um, some more about the the insulin theory. But before we do, just one other comment about uh, damage to the body system with uh, glucose. There's also a thing called the Warburg effect, which we know uh, happens with a, a large number of cancers. Cancer cells have very uh, rudimentary um, metabolic processes, not like ours with the TCA cycle, Krebs cycle, oxidative phosphorylation, all of those big complicated versions, all it does is break, can, most cancer cells just break down glucose. So guess what? Diabetes is associated with glucose. That's the punchline to this, to this part of the discussion. Um, and uh, melanoma is associated with, high, with diabetes. Um, colon cancer, several others. So again, <clears throat> significant uh, danger around having your blood pressure, uh, your blood glucose over, over 100 for extended period of time. Now, if you think about the typical middle ager or baby boomer uh, with growing insulin resistance, what we're looking at is a, an increasing level of glucose in the blood. And that is a large part of what goes on in the aging process. Now, <clears throat> how can you manage that? Well, again, let's go back to the example that we've learned from diabetics. They have found that you can control blood glucose not only with exercise and with uh, medications, but also with diet, taking the carbs out of your diet. So, does this all mean that um, low-carb diets work I think they do for a lot of people, and I think they work very well. Let's get back to um, the insulin theory of weight uh, management as voiced by Gary Tobbs. Uh, basically, so most of us know that, or a lot of us know that insulin pulls uh, glucose out of the blood and puts it into the cells, the liver and, the, and muscle cells. Uh, many people don't know that insulin also stops uh, glucose metabolism metabolism, it, uh, it uh, or stops glucose, uh, uh, neogen gluconeogenesis, it stops the liver's process of making glucose, it stops um, fat cells from mobilizing fat, it stops uh, body cells from burning fat. So in other words, it stops all of these um, fat burning mechanisms and just uh, causes us to deposit uh, fat and glucose to get that glucose level in our blood down. Well, uh, he takes, uh, Tau takes that to an extreme and, and others have demonstrated this actually with lab rats that had a very active insulin reaction. 
They could grow fat even while in a starvation or calorie restriction mode. They continued to grow fat, so where did the energy go? They just stopped moving. These laboratory rats did that. Now, are there humans that do that? Well, you know, maybe that's one of the tendencies as we age with, uh, uh, as humans, we start getting fatter, we start getting less active. Um, and maybe that's not all just because of um, our behavior. Maybe there's some endocrine driving, endocrine uh, hormonal reasons driving this activity. I see that I've gone on quite a bit. There's still a lot more to talk about in this area, so we'll cover, cover this in a couple of other videos.